It took me years to become an instructional designer. I was frustrated. I was hurt. Most of all, I was tired. <laughs> I was sick of going through the motions, and I just wanted to become an instructional designer. And I'm seeing so many of you go through those exact same feelings right now. So for today, I want to give you my top five tips on how to not give up on the instructional design job hunt. So let's get this list started, shall we? And tip number one is to design a plan and work your way backwards. You know that I talk a lot about backward design and it's for a good reason. It doesn't just apply to courses and trainings and how we develop them, but also really for anything as far as for life skills. I mean, think about it. First and foremost, you are creating a goal. And then from there, you are taking a step backwards in order for you to be able to figure out how exactly am I determining, am I on track? What am I looking for? What types of tangible skills, what types of evidence do I need to be able to see that yes, I am aligned and I'm going towards that goal? Then you take another step backwards. You're trying to figure out how are you going to be able to create ways for you to practice, to make sure that you are building those baby steps, that foundation towards being able to hit ultimately that end goal. And of course, during this point of time, what is super important is allowing yourself to make mistakes. We learn from failure. We are not perfect. We are human beings. It is okay to make mistakes. So allow yourself to be able to do that. And then finally, immerse yourself in the right type of content that is going to allow you to just constantly be thinking about becoming an instructional designer. That's all that it really takes if you were able to make a solid plan. And I know this kind of sounds silly, but if you were able to make this plan, you are never going to be off track. If you have any doubt and you're like, hmm, I'm not sure if this is the right thing I should be doing, go back to the plan. Is it inside of the plan? Does it help you? Does it align to your end goal? Does it help you to solve the problem? If yes, you're on track. If no, it's really not worth your time and it's not worth your energy. So write it down and keep it really anywhere that you are going to visibly be seeing this, whether it's in your office or your bathroom mirror or whatever, I don't care. Make sure that the plan is visible. And once again, if you have any questions, you can always refer back to that plan. Tip number two is to celebrate every single win. It doesn't matter how big or how small. Anytime that you do something awesome, you celebrate the life out of that thing. Did you perhaps get a phone screening opportunity but you never thought was possible in your wildest dreams? Celebrate that. Did you make it to the first round or a second round of an interview? Celebrate that. And also, I don't care how you define your celebration, by the way. It could be something as simple as just ordering your favorite food from DoorDash or calling your best friend or mom or dad or siblings or kids or whoever just to be able to talk about something. What you are trying to be able to do is that the more that you talk about it, the more that you bring awareness to this, you are building your self-confidence, your self-efficacy. You are driving towards that growth mindset that I want you to really be able to think about is trying to ride that momentum, ride that wave, and keep on using it time and time and time again. So celebrate every single time that an opportunity pops up that you know is absolutely awesome. Tip number three is to network every week. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Relationships are everything. Being able to connect with other people, to form those bonds, to have go-to people, to be able to ask questions and to share in wins and losses and talk about these things is absolutely so essential. It's essential for you as a human being and for growth, but also for growth in your career as well. Because think about it, if you're able to connect with more people, you're going to be forming stronger bonds, stronger relationships, and this is going to lead to more opportunities. Opportunities. The more that people are aware about you and your skill set and what you can bring to the table, the more they're going to be thinking about you the next time an opportunity comes up that perhaps matches your skill set. And also, the people who you should be connecting with, by the way, more than literally anyone else, is other instructional designers. 
If you're asking why, it's because of the fact that instructional designers, they are the first one to post about new jobs. And it's because they're on the teams and they see that the gap is starting to form. They get the word that, hey, our team is growing. We're gonna be looking for someone new. If you know of someone in your network, definitely reach out to them and see if they would be interested. Or can you share it on LinkedIn? That is exactly where I see the most amount of instructional design jobs by far is on LinkedIn. And that's because of the fact that I'm connected to thousands of instructional designers. So I would highly recommend for you to do the same thing as far as for connecting with other like-minded people and to build out that network. Tip number four is to read with purpose and then go take action. If you are like me, then you have a limited amount of time to be able to read. And then one day you find that magical holy grail of time and you just binge read an entire book. And then all of a sudden you're having a conversation with someone and they say like, oh, what did you think of the first couple of chapters? And you're like, oh, you know what? It was, I, um, yeah, what? what was in the first couple of chapters. And oh yeah, that's right. The information isn't sticking because you're binge reading the entire thing. And it's really, there's, you're not really retaining this information because you're consuming so much at once and you're not acting upon it. So for a lot of instructional design books out there, that's why there are practice questions and reflections and application questions at the end of them. That's literally how I wrote this book, by the way, all about instructional design, is that I wanted you to read a chapter and then go do something with the information that you were just reading about. So if you are reading a book and it does not have practice questions or anything else at the end, by the way, the way you can do is read a chapter write down a summary, and then go with, uh, apply the takeaways if at all possible. Now, this is kind of like almost you're writing like a mini book report. So if you think back to the high school days, you had to write a book report and then you gave a presentation on that material. And I guarantee that helped the information to stick. And maybe even now you still perhaps remember your presentation on To Kill a Mockingbird or a Catcher in the Rye. Entirely possible. But this does apply, especially now as being an adult where our time is so limited and we are so crunched. So if you're going to be reading something that is helping you for personal or professional development, read a chapter, write everything down, and then go apply it if at all possible. And my fifth and final tip is to form a mastermind. We learn from others. We learn from stories. We learn from experiences. It's why you are listening to me talk right now. We learn from other people. So isn't it a good idea to bring together like-minded individuals who share the same type of goal as you? Yeah, it's actually a great idea. Now, if you want to be able to call this a mastermind, a study group, a work group, whatever it is, the point is to be able to come together, talk about personal, professional development, talk about those same types of goals, and to be able to bounce ideas off of one another, to share experiences, to celebrate wins, to talk about losses, talk about next steps, or talk about problems you are currently facing, and if anyone has any ideas about how to solve them. Being able to have a community, which is basically a better word for all of these different things, if you can bring together a community of people to help you and to help one another, then all of you are going to be able to accomplish your goals. And I can confidently tell you to do this because I have a form of mastermind or community or whatever you wanted to be able to call it in pretty much every area of my life. I have a group for fitness. I have one for research and higher education. I have one for business. I know that when I surround myself with other determined people like myself, I am far more likely to hit my goal compared to if I was just kind of winging it and doing it by myself. So you need other people. And of course, you might be asking me like, uh, so Luca, where do I find these other people? Certainly on LinkedIn, there is a strong learning nerd community on LinkedIn. You can absolutely go and find other instructional designers and aspiring instructional designers. We also have a Facebook group of almost like a thousand people right now of same thing of brand new folks coming into instructional design and other people who are actually veterans in the field. Guarantee other people are looking to do the exact same thing as you to form a group and of course to be able to come together. 
Well, that is all I have for you, my friends. Share this with somebody who really needs to be able to have some motivational words and some boosting of some self-confidence. If you know somebody who is down in their luck and we're thinking about giving up in this entire job search, be sure to share this with them and hopefully this will help to point them in the right direction. And of course, if you are both sharing that same type of common goal as far as for becoming a designer, that perhaps is going to be a person that you can form a study group with, a mastermind with, and you know, what? There you go. If you enjoyed this content, you can find all of my other stuff over at drlukehobson.com. And you can even find this book, What I Wish I Knew Before Becoming an Instructional Designer on Amazon. That's all I have for you, my friends. Stay nerdy out there. I'll talk to you next time.